Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. My name is Brad. This is my channel, Animate Orange, where I build a lot of 3D metal models. And on the table today, finishing up the Freight Train gift box set, we have the Off-Center Caboose. I built the rest of them. If you haven't seen my other videos, go back and check those out. You'll see the build. It's one car at a time. I've basically split it up into several videos so I can focus on each one. And they're not very complicated builds. Let's see if the Caboose follows in with that idea. I think maybe it'll be a little bit more than the, the other cars, but probably not as much as the freight train, or excuse me, the locomotive. Not freight train, the whole thing is a freight train. But I'm going to quit babbling. Let's open this up and continue that build, finish it off, and keep on, keep it on. So like before, I'm going to make an assumption here that you have built some previous Metal Earth models and seen these type of instructions before, have some idea of uh, the layout and how it works and, and the symbols and the legend. So I'm not going to go over all that. You've at least assume you've at least started from the beginning of this series of builds with the freight train. So by this point, you know something about this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the directions. Instead, I'm just going to talk about some tools. I've pulled out the one sheet for the off center caboose and I have the one metal sheet in this envelope here. Talk about some tools and we'll get started. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. This set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. We've talked about some tools. I've got my one sheet ready to go and some basic tools to get started. Let's build this off-center caboose. The pattern has held true, starting with the wheels. There is two sets and I'm going to build them together. Just like the previous builds, I'm using a small drill bit and flat nose pliers to bend and shape the little axles. And like I've done before, I'm going to skip over some of the repetitive steps and move right along.
and now to shape then attach all eight wheels. After getting the wheels on, sometimes a little final shaping is necessary. It helps if you use the tabs sticking up to help hold the top section in place as you bend the last flap down. I did not do that on the hopper car and had problems with the tabs angling out and not lining up. With part four, I initially wanted to use the round nose pliers to shape it, but the round nose pliers do not come into sharp enough points. Plus, I could shape one side, but then I would not be able to get the pliers in to shape the other. What I did was try and use the step mandrel to shape the middle, but it needed a little tidying up with tweezers. Then I grabbed the end of each edge on either side flap and bent upwards, forming a slight curve. It worked better than I expected.
Just like with the boxcar and hopper car, there is a similar framework underneath and it might take some wiggling and moving around of the separate sections to get all the little slots to line up. Once again, there is a tip to fold one tab up and one tab down on these side pieces, which is a good idea. One tab will keep the wall from sagging out, and the other tab, bent the other way, will keep the wall from sagging inward. However, I prefer to lightly twist the tabs for now. It's quicker and easier than trying to fold those pieces over while holding two different parts together with one hand. And then when the structure is more complete, I can easily come back untwist and fold over those tabs for a neater look. For forming the hook, I bend the strip and the other half of the hook at a right angle to the first half of the hook, and then using the precision tweezers, carefully bend the longer strip a little at a time using the one side of the hook as a guide. Then I fold over the other half of the hook, and then push in the shorter tip with the tip of the tweezers. Unlike the previous cars, the hitch attaches to the frame in such a way that the tabs are showing. So I wanted to try for a neater look and pinch the tabs over and bend them flat rather than just twisting them. Like with the box car, the caboose has a centerpiece along the roof that has a lot of little flaps along the edge to fold over. Thank goodness it's not one long flap on either side, but several easy to bend short sections. Tip here, bend the shorter end pieces first if you're using wider tweezers.
I used a smallish flashlight to give the roof just a little bit of a curve. Sometimes when shaping circular parts like the little chimney on the caboose, I use the place where it connects as sort of a guideline to find the, about the right size drill bit or tool that I'm going to use to shape it. It doesn't always give me the exact right size, but it's a good place to start. I should have bent the tabs in slightly since they fan out a little. It would help them line up with their slots. Now to untwist and fold over these tabs I lightly twisted earlier. I 
I initially got a little mixed up with which way to fold these step pieces that attach around the corners of the caboose. Fold the side pieces so that the engraving faces outwards instead of inward. It's a little weird, but it's how it's set up to. I wanted to fold the tabs over holding on these steps to keep with the neater look idea, but I don't think I could have pulled it off four times in a row without doing any damage to any of the steps. Too many bends and folded joints will break over time. I decided to just twist them. I found it helpful to bend the tabs in slightly. They lined up with their slots better when I did that. And I'm all done. I've finished. The caboose is complete. The entire train set is complete. Awesome. This has been a very enjoyable build. Very enjoyable build indeed. It took me about an hour and 15 minutes to build the caboose. Very similar process to the, the previous cars. A lot of the same steps. A few new parts, but with it being a caboose, there's definitely some differences, but it's so much the same is what I, you know, you've already done by this point. If you built the rest of them, it's a little bit repetitive, very comfortable, very comfortable build by this point. If you build it in the same order that I have, by the time you get to the caboose, it's a breeze to throw together. Really doesn't take long, very enjoyable build, wonderful set because you get five different things in one that don't take a really long time. Fair amount of attention to detail, fair amount of involvement, Nice reward, really wonderful models. I really enjoy it. So the caboose is all done. Overall, like I just said, the whole thing is very much worth it. I really enjoy this this gift box set. This is probably the best one so far because you're getting five models in one, and none no none, none of the independent models are overly hard. They're fun. They're fairly quick, not too difficult, just challenging enough, and you end up with this long train set. That's really awesome and I'll tell you one thing after completing all of this because I was fairly excited about it to begin with but as is very often the case with these models when I build a Metal Earth model I may come into it a little bit excited fairly excited want to add to my collection and by the time I'm done I've gained some sort of new appreciation for whatever model I've built some detail that I would have never noticed before that now that it's been hands-on and I've put it together myself 
is kind of neat. And I'm really enjoying that about these models. And I'm really enjoying having an entire set of a train. And I'm very, very tempted, now that I'm done, very tempted to go out and buy one or two more sets just to have extra boxcars and extra gondolas and extra flat cars and, and maybe an extra uh, locomotive so that I can have a, an even longer, more realistic train to kind of curve around and set up somewhere. I don't know. It's very tempting to go out and buy another set just to have more cars. So, yeah, that I did not expect. So, Metal Earth, if you're watching, if you're listening, I think there's a few other cars maybe you could create and we could have a whole thing going on here for the train enthusiasts that uh, I may have just become. Anyway, if you enjoy these videos, if you enjoy my build videos, please consider becoming a supporter. Uh, a little bit of a donation will go a long way in helping bring more and interesting builds. There's a lot of stuff out there I haven't gotten to yet that I'd love to get to. Some of it's time, some of it's money. Uh, there's some really big models I'd love to bring to the channel and I'm hoping to bring something very soon. So consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You don't need to be. I'm still going to make these videos whenever possible. But thank you to those who have contributed and anybody who's considering it. Give it some thought. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And keep on keeping on.